In this video, I will discuss how to improve your Hadoop usage with data compression. This might not seem like the most exciting topic, but data compression has shaped the way we live today. It's the reason why we stream Spotify music and download iTunes songs instead of buying CDs. It's why we watch more Netflix movies and YouTube videos than regular television broadcasts. And it's why we post Instagram selfies and Snapchat snaps instead of developing photographs from plastic film. Data compression has been a part of so many huge changes because it reduces the space needed to store files and speeds up data transfer across networks and disks. When dealing with massive volumes of data, both of these savings are significant, so it pays to use compression with Hadoop. Too often, people don't store compressed files in Hadoop, and when you think about the kind of files that people are ingesting, XML, JSON, delimited text files like CSV and TSV, these are not only uncompressed, they are not binary, so they use up too much space. The major benefit of these files are that they are human readable, but this benefit is nullified when you ingest massive amounts of these files into Hadoop, where it is more efficient for them to be machine readable. All compression algorithms exhibit a space-time trade-off. Faster compression and decompression speeds come at the expense of smaller space savings. For example, an algorithm built for speed will not compress a file as much as an algorithm built to produce high compression ratios. Different algorithms have different compression characteristics. Gzip uses more CPU resources than Snappy or LZO, but provides a higher compression ratio. Snappy and LZO are optimized for speed and are around an order of magnitude faster than Gzip. Snappy is significantly faster than LZO for decompression. Bzip2 compresses more effectively than Gzip, but it is slower. If you need your compressed data to be splittable for MapReduce, Bzip2 files can be split, and so can LZO files if they have been indexed in a pre-processing step. Let's take a look at the advantage of a splittable format. For example, say your Hadoop cluster's HDFS block size is 128 megabytes, And say you ingest a bzip2 file whose compressed size is 1 gigabyte. If we divide the number of bytes in 1 gigabyte by the number of bytes in 128 megabytes, then you can see that the file will be stored in HDFS as 8 blocks. Here's a visual representation. HDFS automatically splits the bzip2 file into 8 blocks and stores them on different Hadoop data nodes. A bzip2 file contains a synchronization marker between blocks which enables a MapReduce job to run 8 map tasks in parallel, one for each of the 8 blocks. Now consider a gzip file whose compressed size is 1 gigabyte. As before, HDFS will store the file as 8 blocks. However, it's impossible to start reading at an arbitrary point in a gzip stream, so it's not possible for a map task to read its block independently of the others. A single map will need to process the eight HDFS blocks, most of which will not be local to the map, so the job will take longer to run. Which compression format you use depends on such considerations as file size, format, and the tools that you are using for processing. Here are some options arranged in order of least to most effective. The worst option is to store the file uncompressed. This is not a good thing to do. Split a file into chunks and compress each chunk separately. You can use any supported compression format, but your compressed chunks should be approximately the size of an HDFS block. Use a compression format that supports splitting for example, you can use bzip2, but the trade-off is that it's slower than snappy. The best option is to use a container file format that supports both compression and splitting. Great examples are the Avro and Parquet file formats, and for fast speed, you use snappy with both Avro and Parquet. In my example coming up, I'm going to concentrate on Avro because it is four years more mature than Parquet, but it's worth noting that there has been a lot of good press lately about Parquet, so it's well worth your time too. Like Parquet, Avro's support goes beyond MapReduce. 
Data processing frameworks like Spark, Impala, Pig, Hive, and Crunch can all read, process, and write Avro files. Avro uses a self-describing binary format. When data is serialized using Avro, a schema is stored along with data. Therefore, an Avro file can be read using many programming languages. Avro is commonly used to send data across networks, since it's known as an efficient serialization mechanism for transforming data into a compact binary format. The Avro file format is the standard method used to send data across a network with Flume. Scoop automatically generates an Avro schema from the metadata it retrieves from a relational database server. And Avro can use Snappy for fast compression and decompression. In my example coming up, I'm going to use MapReduce, but here are a few notes about Avro and Spark. The Spark dataset API supports user functions that run directly on Avro schemas. The Spark Avro library supports conversions between Spark SQL and Avro records, making Avro a first-class citizen in Spark, as it supports reading and writing of Avro data from Spark SQL. Spark Streaming allows two approaches to using Flume with Avro. The first is an Avro push-based in-memory approach, whereas the second one, still based on Avro, is a pull-based system using a custom Spark Sync library. I ran a couple of tests to provide an example of the advantages that you get when you use data compression with Hadoop. The only difference between these two sample runs was in their input and output formats. In the first case, a MapReduce program consumed a tab-separated text file and produced a new tab-separated text file that contained the original data plus 12 new calculated fields. In the second case, a similar MapReduce program consumed, consumed an Avro file that had been compressed using Snappy and produced similar output, but in Avro Snappy format instead of TSV. A few notes. I ran the test jobs when no one else was using the cluster during a holiday weekend, so the difference in performance was based purely on file formats. And compared to large Hadoop files, my test files were rather small, but if you extrapolate the results, the savings would be quite significant with larger files. The text input file used about 77 gigabytes of raw HDFS storage and it took the MapReduce program 6 minutes and 37 seconds to create a 134 gigabyte text output file. The Avro input file used about 41 gigabytes of raw HDFS storage, and it took the MapReduce program 4 minutes and 27 seconds to create a 72 gigabyte Avro output file. So, the space saving benefit was achieved. My ingested and refined Avro files both consumed about half as much space as the text files. And the excellent second benefit was that the MapReduce program that processed the Avro file took only two-thirds the amount of time that it took to process the text file. This may be counterintuitive at first because you know that the MapReduce program had to spend time decompressing the Avro input file and compressing the Avro output file but the gains made by moving around the smaller Avro files more than made up for the extra processing tasks. I hope you now understand why data compression with Hadoop is so beneficial. So use container file formats like Avro and Parquet and turn on their snappy compression options. Thank you.